Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 and our Gibraltar save where we're taking a look at what would happen if Gibraltar had the best team in the world. Originally all these players started out at Coventry but after the first season pretty much all of them had left to go on to different clubs um, and last time out we saw them go all the way on to win the World Cup at the first time of asking. Um, a few people have pointed out if we have a look at their senior squad schedule and drop back to the Euros where they didn't do as well as in the World Cup. You can see they got knocked out. Um, quite a few of you pointed out that the Gibraltarian team did not have their goalkeeper in there which meant a backup goalkeeper would have been in the squad. And the way that that works is because Gibraltar doesn't have players in the game, not in this database that I'm using at least, um, it generates kind of random players that are of the ability of the reputation of the team. So when the European Championships are going on, because, uh, because Gibraltar hadn't really had any success, they weren't able to challenge properly in the European Championship without their main goalkeeper because they had a backup goalkeeper of the level of a Gibraltarian side would normally expect. But two years later, when we got to the World Cup and they were winning games all the time, um, they still had backup players in the squad, but they had a player called Avalano who's not showing up um, in these matches here. But Avalano managed to get a goal, I think in the World Cup final for memory, um, and he was another randomly generated player. But the reason he was able to score is that Gibraltar are now up. If we have a look at their profile, they're now up to 11th in the world ranking. And this is before they made the World Cup final. But the randomly generated player, because their reputation has gone up so much, um, was of a much, much higher standard. And it meant that Gibraltar were able to compete despite not having their original 11 players around. And given they've got such a good team, I think as we go forward in time, they will keep climbing up the rankings, probably become the best team in the world in international football, especially after winning the World Cup. Um... And that means that all of their backup players are going to be great as well. So it'll be interesting to see at the end of this experiment whether Gibraltar can keep up their excellent form or if it all completely tails off. And maybe you can let me know in the comments what you think will happen uh, once these players retire and Gibraltar go back to having pretty much no in-game players because I think that will be a really interesting thing to see. But what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look um, going forward five whole years. We'll go one year at a time. Obviously last time we went ahead just to see how the World Cup finished. So we'll go back to that point in a second. But we'll have a look at the domestic success. Which player from Gibraltar is winning the most uh, golden boy or uh, golden balls? Um, we'll see who's winning the Premier League, given pretty much all of these players are in the Premier League. I won't spend too much time on that because it was pointed out that not all of you are necessarily interested in that. Um, and then, obviously, we'll see how Gibraltar are doing in all of the international competitions. So we will go all the way to the next World Cup and see if Gibraltar can defend their title and their name as world champions. So let's go forward. Five, uh, let's go forward one year and see how they've got on. Well, we are now another year into the future. You can see that Gibraltar have got all their team back, including their goalkeeper, Tom Bilson. No sign of Avalano in the teams. I think he's fallen pretty much back out of the game after the World Cup. Um, but they have got a lot of value in this squad, it must be said. No player under 60 million is a sign of how good a team they are. I don't think any of the players have moved anywhere. Uh, if we have a quick look to remind ourselves of how they did in at the World Cup last time around, you can see they did win it in the World Cup final. There's Avalano, the legend of Gibraltar. Um, never played a game for them, but won the World Cup scoring in the final. Um, because if we have a look, I think he is still in the game, but as a random regen. No caps, no goals, 19 years old. Excellent stats for a man from Gibraltar. Um, but they've done quite well in the European League Division 4. Obviously, we're going to need to see if they can get through those groups into Group 1 and maybe win that competition in the future. But they're doing excellently in the European Championships so far, winning an awful lot of games by quite a few goals, only conceding to Croatia. So Gibraltar doing well one year on. You can see if we have a look at the Premier League, maybe starting with Liverpool. Um, if we go to the Premier League table, we can see that the season has not yet kicked off. So we need to go all the way back one year. And it was won by Liverpool on goal difference by three goals from Manchester United. That is one cracking way to finish a season. If we have a look at the senior squad schedule for Liverpool last season... 
in their final game. They won it by three goals. Oh, that has given away a major spoiler there. But they won 3-0 against Spurs to take the Premier League. Uh, Spurs getting a man sent off after 17 minutes. If we look at United in their final game um, and just make sure, was it decided on the final day or not? Because that is a very big way for that season to finish. They did also win 3-0, but it wasn't enough. Clearly, they would have been three goals behind at the start of the game, so they kind of did their job. Maybe then he would have needed one more. But because Liverpool also won by so many goals, they weren't able to catch them. And then in the Champions League final, Morgan Crowther got the goal. Mauro Icardi doubled the lead three minutes later. And in the 57th minute, Bobby Firmino scored for Liverpool. But it wasn't enough for Liverpool to come back, despite having four of the Gibraltar players in their team. So that's how the Premier League finished up that season. And we've seen how the Champions League finished up with Liverpool losing out in the final. So we have champions of England and champions of Europe there right at the top of the league. But let's have a look at the Golden Boy Award. If we can get that up, there it is. And see who's won it this time. You can see Munganga, who is Belgian, won the award last time around. And this time a man from PSG, but not the Gibraltarian has won it. I am absolutely not going to try and pronounce that, given I couldn't pronounce Melbourne or Melbourne. Melbourne, last time. I still can't pronounce it. Um, but uh, it's that Zhivoglayadov. Zhivoglayadov. Maybe if there's a Russian speaker down there can phonetically spell it for me. Um, but no Gibraltarians winning it anymore. I don't know if that's because they're too old. Because I think if we have a look at the Golden Ball, I don't think any of them will have won that either. Um, if we click on the World Golden Ball, it's been won by Neymar. And there is no Gibraltarian anywhere in the top three. And this is a consistent thing that we're seeing. Even though they've got better stats in every single one of the stats usually. I mean, Neymar is not that much better than any of our players. Even if we try to maximise a lot of their major points. He's not that much better than some of them. Especially the likes of Morgan Crowther. So I don't know why none of them are able to challenge for the top. Even though they're winning the Premier League and Champions League. They just can't reach that top, top level which is quite interesting. I do want to have a quick look um, at kind of the stats for this season. Um, those are the wrong kind of stats. I suppose it doesn't have the goals in it because they've moved on to a second season now, unfortunately. But it would have been interesting to see who the top goal scorer was. I imagine it would have been Morgan Crowther as top goal scorer. And he is the captain of Manchester United. Um, and if we have a look at his career stats... He did get 23 goals last season, 33 across all competitions. That's a lot of goals in the Premier League. Was it enough for him to win the Golden Boot? We have a look. He was a runner-up as top goal scorer, so I don't know who won it. Unfortunately, I don't think you can... Oh, no, you can click on it. There we go. Um, and it was won by uh, Lautaro. So a Gibraltarian. Two Gibraltarians at the top there with 23 goals each. Um, but one less game for Lautaro won it over Morgan Crowther. So they have been winning the Golden Boot, which is quite interesting. We can keep an eye on this and see which one of these two are winning it season after season. But it's the first time that one of them has actually won it. So they are getting a lot of goals, but they're not quite getting the average rating they need to win the gold, well, Golden Ball. So let's go forward another year and see if they've managed to break in. Well, as you can see, a year ahead, Gibraltar have absolutely destroyed everybody, conceding just one goal in qualifying while scoring an endless amount, including 10 goals against Andorra. Um, all kinds of players on the score sheet there. Quite impressive, but winning huge margins every step of the way, including Croatia 3-0 away, Turkey 4-0 at home. Uh, just excellent, excellent results. Croatia, the only team to score against them, uh, Pasalic with the goal. And it meant they did qualify for the European Championships, but we'll have a look at that when we go another year ahead because we haven't quite got that far through this save at the moment. If we have a look at the uh, national team senior squad and see which players are in there. Now you can see Gibraltar now in a position where they're getting all these greyed out players start to appear in the team, but they don't have, I don't think at least, any other players in their first 11. The valuation of them all pretty similar, but you can see that Fixter now worth just as much as Morgan Crowther, and Fixter has moved to Manchester United from uh, Barcelona, which is quite interesting. Everybody else still exactly where they were before, but he must have moved for a lot of money, £93 million, 
Uh, he moved for 79 million at the start of the season. Uh, 20 uh, in January. Sorry, he moved in January there. Left Barcelona and has been doing even better for Manchester United than he was for Barcelona. So a huge shock transfer there. Bit of a steal getting him for 79 million, given his valuation has shot up to 93. But Fixter and Crowther together at United could do an awful lot of damage. And if we click on United, did they manage to win the Premier League? Let's have a look at the Premier Division. You can see it has been won by Liverpool for the second year in a row. United finishing all the way down in fourth place. So the signing of Fixter didn't seem to do an awful lot for them. You can see Chelsea were eight points off Liverpool, who are running away with it with all those Gibraltarian players in there. And Manchester City finishing in at third place. If we have a look at the Champions League and see which team has managed to win that, it has been won by Manchester City. They won it ahead of AS Monaco, so the only English team to make it quite that far this time along. Um, but if we drop down to the Europa League, which we didn't look at last time, we can see Arsenal have won it for the second time in uh, three years at that point. They've been in four finals in a row here. Definitely a Europa League team now, I'm afraid to say, Arsenal. They are not a Champions League team anymore. But I think maybe quite a few people will have suspected that anyway. Um, if we have a look at the Golden Ball Award, because now at 24, I don't think any of them are going to win the Golden Boy Award. Um, then we can see that it has again been won by Neymar and still none of them in there. It's pretty much the same three or four players appearing in there um, over these years and nobody else managed to get in there at the moment. But Neymar winning it, despite only getting 18 goals, he did get 26 assists on it. That's 7.99 rating. But Fixter has got a better rating at United than Verratti has at PSG, so I don't know why he's getting in there. But with these two at 31 years old and our players at 24, more around, more around the Mbappe age, there's no reason why they can't challenge and get into the top three. So let's go forward another year and see how Gibraltar did at the European Championships. Well, we're a year ahead and this is how they qualified for the European Championships. So if we skip straight on to the next page, you can see they continue to win every game in the European Championships. 3-0 over Sweden. 3-0 over Scotland, 4-1 over Croatia, who they'd already beaten home and away in qualifying. And then they beat the Czech Republic in the first knockout round, 2-1. Uh, Lautaro with two and Krotha with one. In the quarterfinals, they knocked England out. 81st and 89th minute winners sending them through. And in the semi-finals, 3-1 over France. Lautaro with a hat-trick in that and in the final 4-0 over Spain a demolition of them to win their first European Championship and they did it in style knocking out the likes of England, France and Spain in the knockout stages to get all the way to the winner's position uh, and then in the European League Division A Group 2 um, they did manage to win every single game not a massive surprise there being the likes of Spain though again 3-1 home and away uh, and then carrying on to the end of this season, they continue to win in the World Cup qualifiers. But in the International League semi-finals, they beat Italy 2-0. And in the final, they did what England rarely can and beat Germany 2-0 as well. So they've won the European Championships and the International League finals. They've got the Confederations Cup still to come against New Zealand, the USA and Comoros. They are the reigning European and world champions and International League champions. Can they add Confederations Cup champions? No doubt the first team ever to hold all of those because the International League hasn't been around that long. But I can't think of many teams. Did Spain win the Confederations Cup while also champions of Europe and the world? Um, I'm not that sure they actually did. But what I'm going to do now, instead of this constant checking on the Premier League and making this video be 45 minutes long, is go right to the end of the five years. Um, have a look at how they did in the Confederations Cup and the World Cup. And then we'll go back through their players and see how they did in the Premier League. Well, I know you're probably quite keen to see how Gibraltar did in the World Cup, but right now we're going to take a quick look at the players over the last three or four years. Um, you can see no real changes to any of the players. They're all exactly where they were before. Um, Dylan Fixer really the only player to move. So if we just head straight into Manchester United and the Premier League, um, we can drop back to the league table. And here you can see... 
Four points over Manchester United for Liverpool this time. If we go back to where we left off last time when Liverpool won it by three goals the following year, um, they won it by eight points over Chelsea. And then Manchester United managed to come back, fix to their major, major signing, seemed to deliver the goods for them this year. And they did manage to finish eight points clear of Manchester City. Liverpool all the way down in fourth, having won the Premier League so many times in a row. But they then came back with 96 points to take their title. And they won it again this season, four points clear of Manchester United, uh, with Chelsea and City just behind them. Um, I don't think we want to look at any of those. But if we have a look at the stats in the Premier League, um, we can see the most goals there. Those are the team stats. The player overview shows us that when it comes to goals, Morgan Crother, the top goal scorer. Um, I wonder if we can drop back a season or two here. It doesn't look like you actually can. Um, but you can see here Morgan Crother winning the top goal scorer awards this year. Um, if we have a look at his biography, given he's already won this, we can see how many other times he's managed to win it. If we can go down, top goal scorer, there they all are. You've got Lautaro, Crother, uh, Belotti for Chelsea winning it, Lautaro and then Icardi. So at the most part, it looks like it's between Crowther and Lautaro. 21 goals for Crother this time, 23 for Lautaro, 27 Crother that year. That is a good shout for him potentially winning the Ballon d'Or. Uh, and Lautaro had 23 the year before that, Belotti getting 24 Crowther got 23, but a few more games there. He played all 38 and didn't manage to get more goals somehow. Um, but interesting to see that he has done reasonably well there. If we take a look at the Champions League um, and look at the past winners of this competition, go to the stages, drop back to the 4-5 season and then go all the way to the final we can see it was won by Liverpool, 1-0 over Chelsea there. Um, not showing us who the goal scorers were, but Liverpool winning it for the first time since that famous night in Istanbul and after losing it to United 2-1 the year before that. So you have United, City, Liverpool beating Chelsea, another English team. Then you had Liverpool again beating Chelsea, this time at Cardiff after winning it in Moscow. They win their second in the row. Um, over Chelsea and then this season Manchester City have won it 2-0 over Bayern but their English winners continue to pick up the trophy now they've won it five years in a row after PSG managed to win it United have won it three times since this all started been in the final countless times Chelsea the most unlucky team uh, getting knocked out a couple of times both times to Liverpool as well which is quite funny um, but Liverpool continue to pick up more and more Champions League titles if we go down to the Europa League Arsenal continuing to win this competition been in the final now six times Spurs though as they seem to do at the moment, popping in there and just sort of trying to take their glory. But Spurs unable to win it twice, the losing finalist, once to Arsenal, which I didn't notice before. Um, so quite interesting the way that that's panned out. If we look at the Golden Ball Award, no point looking at the Golden Boy now. Uh, again, they've not won it. How have they not won it? If we look at these previous seasons... You can see this random regens in there, this 25-year-old from Argentina. The following year, uh, Felice Diamico managed to win it. Moussa Dembele now at Liverpool winning it. And then finally Kingsley Coman winning it with that Argentinian in here once more. Um, so none of them are winning the Golden Ball, which is just crazy to me. I don't know how they're doing that. If we go back to Crowther and have a look at his stats over the season, we can see he's getting very good reigns. I mean, this year he got a 7.71 overall, and it just was not enough. If we look at Fixter, the other big name, um, and look at his career stats, again, 7.82, not in the top three for the Golden Ball, despite having a better rating than some of the players in there. I don't really understand what's going on. I know it's maybe over their overall rating across all competitions, but even then they're getting very high ratings, and not one of them getting into the golden ball uh, so maybe somebody can let me know what's going on below down there but if we have a look at Gibraltar the one last piece of the puzzle then you can see in the Confederations Cup they did actually lose to Brazil despite beating all of the teams before them by several goals to nil the USA Comoros New Zealand then Japan 5-0 uh, Crowther getting four in that Finally, against Brazil in the final, beaten 1-0, Gabriel Jesus with the goal. The only match they've lost for a long, long time there. Um, and they were knocked out in the final, so close to winning it, but they are not infallible. 
Um, they did well in World Cup qualifying and at the World Cup. They were beaten in the final by England. England have won the World Cup over Gibraltar. Can you believe it? They're becoming a nation of chokers, Gibraltar. Um, doing so well past Colombia, Czech Republic, Congo, Japan again knocked out. Um, took extra time to beat Belgium, 110th minute. Beat Germany, a penalty. Josh Eccles with two penalties in two rounds taking Gibraltar through. But he couldn't get one in the final. Knocked out in Canada. Um, and that is that. They've missed out on two competitions in a row there. Um, and if we catch up to the current time, we can see that they have been beaten in the International League final as well. So they've lost three international finals in a row. And they are starting to look like major, major chokers. They even lost in the European League Division A to Portugal. So they are not unbeatable. They are being beaten by different teams. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see if they can ever win a World Cup again because right now it doesn't look like they will with three straight defeats in finals. So maybe let me know what you think will happen at the next World Cup in the next part. Uh, do drop a like on the video if you're still enjoying these series and let me know if there's anything you would like to see. I do check the comments from the last episode before doing the next one. Um, also make sure to subscribe to the channel when the next part does come out and when the next experiment's out. Uh, drop a like, like I said, and also check out my Twitter and Patreon using the links in the description. But until next time, see ya!